Good evening. I'm Justine Williams, your hope for this edition of Journals, Jewels, and Journeys magazine. Tonight, we're going to be working on a personalized binder and organizing system. And we're going to do a step-by-step -step process. So uh, let's get started. I want to start off uh, showing you this binder that I made 14, actually 15 or some art years ago. Okay, this binder was something that I, I did when I was uh, on bed rest with my 12th child, my daughter. And I can't even remember how I did it because it's so neatly done. And as you can see, it's very well put together. It's lasted all these years, but I will say that I have not even uh, put anything in it. On the front <clears throat> is a picture, her sonogram picture. And if you look at her, you can tell it's her because it looks just like her. <laughs> She's 15 years old right now. Okay, so I wanted to show you the binder that I'm going to use for this project. So this is the binder that I use. I think it was something that I had things in and I just took it out and used it. This one I specifically went to uh, find. I wanted a binder that I could hold a lot in and I went to the Goodwill store looking for something and I found it. Okay, so this binder is perfect. It even has this lock. So you pull it down to open it this way, close it, and it locks automatically. The other thing I like about this binder is that it has this clear pl plastic over here and over here. It's wide. Uh, the dimensions are, I know it's nine and a half inches long and I believe it's 12 inches across. Let me just check. Yes, it's 12 inches across. It's nine and a half inches long and the ring binder is three and a half inch circumference. So let me just show you the type of things that you can put in this binder. Okay. Let me start over here. <clears throat> All right. I think I'm going to need my glasses for this. Now, this is one of those desk pads that you would, you know, usually have on a desk where you uh, jot down information. So, still, I wanted to be able to have something that I could jot information down because I work at home and I'm, I wear a lot of different hats and I go from one project to the next and it could be personal or it could be business. You'll never know what it is I'm doing. But if I have a surface that I can just scramble things on and then sort it out later, that would help me not to lose anything. So I can just transcribe whatever notes I have. So that's what this is great for. So I wanted to be able to use this in my binder. And I'm going to show you what I did. Okay? I just took pages out. Okay? And I three-hole punched it. And because my binder, we already said, is 12 inches uh, wide, so I'm going to measure at the 12 inch mark and right about here without having to do any um, exact measuring. I'm just going to pull this over. Look at that. Okay. So that's pretty much where I'm going to fold this and it would go easily into my binder. Okay, so that's how we're gonna do it. So as we customize this binder, it's gonna have things that you would use in your binder. This is something I find that I that's invaluable for me, okay, because I take care of a lot of business. Okay, same thing with this. This is a, um, a graph. And I found that the graph pads can be used multi-purposely. So you'll see from the things that I have over here how that's done. Now, I'm also a scrapbooker, an avid scrapbooker. And I like to hold on to, um, these are just some scrapbooking notes. I was a scrapbooking instructor, and I kind of wanted to do it more organized. So what I did was I made copies of um, things that I would go over and, and help to help with my instruction. So this is something that I would want to hold on to. So this 
could go in my binder. Okay. And then I have my pantry record. Now, how many times have you gone to the grocery store and brought the same thing over and over? Have you done that? I do it all the time, okay? And then you find that there are things that you should have gotten that you didn't get. Now, fortunately, I can write down a list and remember it so that when I go to the grocery store, I don't have to look at my list, but sometimes, every now and then, I, I forget a few items. Um, this record is really for the staples list, so you want to hold on to, you want to know that you always have certain things in your cabinet. So when you have a recipe that you want to make, um, these are staples. Things like baking powder and baking soda, those are staples, salt and pepper. Okay, now I would also uh, use graph paper with that. So in my binder with my pantry records, I would also keep some graph paper with that. Okay. Now, let me go over this one next. Okay, this is definitely uh, customized for me in my life. I also am a homeschool mom. I, am, I have homeschooled for 25 years, my older children, and I'm now back and forth, you know, in public school, out of public school. Well, this time I'm uh, homeschooling my 15-year-old again, and I have to keep her organized because, you know, as a teenager, you know, they like to wiggle. Okay, so I need to kind of keep her still and I need to keep her organized. And so in order to keep her organized, I must be organized. So what I have here is um, actually the um, subject list of the curriculum that she's working with. I have that on here. So what I did was I, I went and I made copies of this list because I, I didn't want to use the originals. and It's just duplicate of the same thing. I didn't want to use the originals and then I would need it concurrently and not be able to have it. So I did make a copy. So that's something that would also go in my binder. Okay. If you have children in school, you're, you know how important the district calendar is. Okay. The district calendar gives you the events for the whole year of what's going on in school. When you have parent-teacher conferences, uh, when school is out, when there's no school. So that's something I like to have on hand. Again, I would add graph paper with this in that section. Then we have the old trusty chore chart. What parent wouldn't want a chore chart in their binder? You know, it's very easy to say, I told you and the kids kind of move around and say, you never told me that, okay? Well, if you have your chore chart handy, you can look at what the chores are and whose chore that belongs to, and you can also change it around. So the chore chart is something that will go in my binder. Then there's the weekly time, time chart. So in this section, this is all my home education section. So this is the section for my daughter that I'm homeschooling. And um, she needs a weekly time chart because she doesn't go to public school and so everything is customized, her education is customized. She doesn't have to be doing the same thing everybody's doing at the time that they're doing it. And she loves the fact that her brothers go out to school in the morning, they have to get up early and she doesn't. But I still need to go over with her such things as how much time she's spending sleeping, eating and dressing, uh, how much time she's spending on her work, sports, reading, family time, TV, radio, clubs, chores, telephone, and miscellaneous. So that's going to go in my section for her also. Then there's the goal organizer. Like I said, this is all under my home instruction um, section. Uh, I need to go over with her about her long-term goals, short-term, weekly, and daily. That's for that section as well. And then her weekly schedule. This goes over the time, how much time she's spending doing the things that she needs to do for school, okay? Um, she doesn't have to do a, a complete six hour day unless it includes recreation because she's just the only student and most of it involves CPR. And then there's the lesson plans for the day, okay? So all of that will go in that section. Now, this is my household finance. In this household finance, household and finance section, what I did was I had gotten some copies from 